I look up and oh, it says wan on the right. I've actually won a game and I'm playing with United. These are teams that people pick first on FIFA. I just wanted to live a kid's dream. You know, my parents were quite strict and they didn't want me to lose the love for football. Yeah, they just kept me on track throughout. Just don't judge a book by its cover. Obviously, when I look back at it now, my dad, at the time growing up, I used to just think he just wants to annoy me and just control me. But if I look back at it, it's all for the right reasons. You know, when I look back, how he kept me inside when some of my friends wanted me to come out. And I look at where they're at now, it just all makes sense and adds together. So I'm always supporting, always pushing me, always telling me how I should improve. You know, don't praise me much, which I think helped. You know, because I always wanted his praise. The less amount he praised me, the more hard I'd work. Growing up, he's strict. It's like he knew my goal. Well, he used to sacrifice sometimes his job, like leave early to take me to training. And this wasn't even by a car. This is when we didn't have a car. Like we used to take like free bus, train, tram, just to get to training. The route would be to go up a hill, top of the hill, that's like a five minute walk. And then once you get to the hill, uh, another five to the tram stop. Once you get to the tram stop, you've got to wait for the tram now. They go from like seven to 10 minutes. This is from Fieldway tram stop. This is on a packed tram as well. It's, yeah, it's when people come back from work. So you go in there um, and you've just come back from school. So you're tired already. So you're carrying a lot of stuff. Take that to Sandylands and then it's a tram stop. From Sandylands, you wait for a bus. That bus is filled with school kids from high school, college. See, that's even worse. Even sometimes when the bus is packed, they don't let you on, you have to catch the next one. Then you take that to Shirley. Then once you take that to Shirley, it's a hospital called Bethlehem Hospital. That's where we trained. But it's quite, it's, once you get into hospital, you've got to go to the back where there's a field, which is at least seven minute walk, but it's the longest walk ever, ever. So training used to start at six, finish eight we home by 10, but that journey back home, you're hungry, sweating, you know what I mean? You just want to get home, but and it's cold. So those, that's the journeys I remember. That's not easy, I, like, if I take train, I'm tired after it. So, you know, to see it back then. And you used to just take both of us and you know, make sure we've eaten, make sure we have a drink for when we're at training, make sure we have boots, make sure it's cleaned. Just make sure we're ready, for, you know, when it's the time for training, matches, and when you play, you enjoy it. And I was enjoying it throughout. I had no complaints. I give back to them by giving them the opportunity of doing the stuff they missed out on growing up. Because I took most of the time during, for them taking care of me going football. Got them a family house, moved them from that area. Yeah, just something bigger, nicer for them to enjoy. Just my love back, giving my love back to them. When I first went there, first session, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I was going to my normal club, and then I went there, and then I just trained. And then after a week or two, they said they wanted to sign me. Couldn't believe it, I don't know how it works. Obviously, you meet people, you go into high school, so you meet people from different areas. It's like, you want to do stuff what they're doing, because it looks fun. So I kind of got dragged into that. And playing with the club, Crystal Palace, I started to not take it serious, stuff like diets, after school, chicken and chip shop, I was there. Fizzy drinks, the whole lot, you can name it. There's a crowd where some didn't play football, so their situation wasn't the same as me. They didn't have to go training after school. Well, that's what I had to do, but that's what I didn't want to do, because they weren't doing it. So I kind of got dragged into that. If I actually continued, it wouldn't have been the same situation I'm in now. I think Palace, they spoke to my dad and they basically just hinted that this could be my last season. And you know, when he told me, that I could see in his eyes there, that hurt him, especially from what he's done for me to get to that position. You know, the travel and the support, everything. So he just thought I was just throwing it all away. So he spoke to me and I felt his pain. I could just see it, you know, the way he tells me. Usually he's lecturing me, but this one he's actually speaking to me. Like, you know, I've never seen him speak to me like that. So that's when I knew he was serious and it meant a lot to him and the family. So. I thought this was my only chance, let me not ruin it. Let me just fix up and just do it. And then everything went positive from there. Still training hard, like nothing affects my training. So two weeks later, we've got Tottenham. He puts the squad up. 
So I'm thinking I've counted the rooms in the room, the players. So if they're 17, that means you're on the bench. And I was the only one in my in 23s, I would say closer to the first team than anyone else. So, and there was three of us. So I think that spot has to be mine. Puts the first 11 and then the bench on the bottom. Me, first of all, I'm going to realistic. I'm going to look at the bottom because I'm not going to be in the starting 11. My name wasn't there, but the two players in 23s were there. So my heart just went, I thought he's taking the piss. And then I get a tap and they're saying, congrats, congrats. I look up and it says wan on the right. And then, obviously, yeah. So it was quite weird because growing up, it, wasn't never, it was never wan it was just Aaron Basaka. I'm thinking, wan it looked weird. And then, yeah, it kicked in and then done our training session. After that, told dad, he, was, he wasn't, I know himself he was excited and happy, but he didn't show it to me. He's just like, that's good, that's good, just, you know what to do, you've been waiting for this for a long time. So and this is your time, you know, you got to take it. Woke up early, ate um, healthy breakfast I ate before. I knew it was going to be a hard game because my fitness, like 23's fitness to first team, different level. So I knew it was going to be a long game, especially against the players that I was playing against. It was it Lucas, Dele Ali, Harry Kane, all at Son. So I knew it was going to be a long game. So we report in, we're waiting. I hate waiting. It's nerves just kicking and, uh, and then Delaney, centre back. Uh, well, I'm waiting with him, innit? So he, he knows it's my debut. So he's just encouraging me, telling me like, just no fear, play without fear. Just saying, you've been waiting for this. Because he's one that's, he's noticed my progression. Uh, throughout when I've been training with them, so he's encouraged me, he's told me that. And then one thing he told me, I always remember, is after this game, everything will change in life. Like, friends will wanna, want me to come out just to rebuild friendships that are broken up. People start trying to sell you things, clothes and all of that. Everyone just wants you to go out. I don't believe it, but I was like, OK, when it comes, I'll deal with it. And it's actually true, you know, it happened. And then, Going to the changing room, that's when I first see my top number, then that's when they gave me 29. And waiting again, and then when the tunnel, as soon as I step out the whole stadium's loud, I experience experience anything like that. And then that's when I realised this is this is it, this is the moment I've been waiting for. I was facing forward, do you know what I mean? Saying a prayer and the see heading out. I remember my first tackle, Ben Davis, driving through, driving through. They don't know the length of my legs. That's when no one knew anything. So he was far and then I just lunged in, took it off him and then we went on for a counter attack. The crowd went wild after that. So that just wanted me to do it again, didn't it? So it felt like I'm home, you know, the crowd's back at me. So yeah. So I played that season seven and then next season I played the full season. But during that start of that season, I was told by my agent that United are watching or were interested or whatever, but brush it to the side. I'm thinking, it's too early. It's my first season, it's not true. Let me just leave it. And then it got to the end of the season and then it was it was actually the real deal. So I just felt all stuff, all sorts like moving, leaving family behind, all of that, being by myself. I just thought I weren't ready. Yeah, the day I signed. It's a long day to be honest. Um, on the way to the training ground, it's just woodlands and just farms, and I was thinking, what well, like this is what I have to get used to. And then obviously once I got to training ground, ain't seen anything like that. Uh, the size, just pitches, buildings, everything. You know, once you you step in, you see the club's history, trophies, and everything. It didn't kick in until it was announced. So it was like I just gone with my day, and then I've gone on holiday now. I'm thinking I've got three weeks, two weeks off. Uh, I find out I've got a week. Went to IB for. On the second day I got there, that's when they announced it. <laughs> that's when it was official, you know what I mean? United, but still, it didn't kick in, but I still celebrated there. And then, unfortunately, lost my passport out there. Just lost it in the villa. Yeah, couldn't find it. it had to be me, so it's only mine. Came back from my night up, gone back to the villa. One, I'm searching for it, searching. But I'm thinking, let me just search for it in tomorrow. But tomorrow's our flight in the morning. So then everyone's looking for it and panicking. So that just makes me panic. And I think, right, we've got to get this sorted. And then it's confirmed it's gone. And I'm thinking, we got, I've got to be in Australia on Sunday. 
how is this going to work? Like, passports usually take a while. And then the agents, they spoke to United and they got me back and I even got a passport within a day. And when I saw that passport, I was relieved, so I was happy. We flew out to Australia. That's when I first met the boys here. So I didn't train with them before. I just met them on that day we were leaving to go on the airport. I didn't know how to feel, you know, I'm thinking, once I get there, maybe they'll look at me like, oh, he's come from a lower club, things like that. But literally, it's the opposite. They will welcome me, make sure I was comfortable. Obviously, I've seen the fixtures. I'm thinking, it's Chelsea first day. I'm thinking, oh, it's, it's going to be like, I was thinking back to my first debut, it's going to be a long game. Like, do you know what I mean? But I'm thinking, I'm at United, you know, this, there's no excuses. Can't complain. Take it how, how it comes. I was just ready for it, and it was the same thing, you know, when I came out to cut the tunnel, the crowd, but it's a different stadium, so it's even bigger, the crowd, they were behind us, and you saw the game, you know, we went in there with confidence to win the first game, even to get a clean sheet, you know, that's, it, it meant a lot. It's like, I've actually won a game and I'm playing with United. These are teams that people pick first on FIFA, you know, I'm, I'm there on the lineup, so... Yeah, it meant a lot to me. Wan Bissaka! And it's a special moment for Aaron Wan Bissaka, his first senior goal. My first goal against Newcastle, that one meant a lot. Long wait, been a long wait, but we've gone up the field now. It's, I've got the ball, I've driven, in. I've seen Marcus, so I played it to him, and I've seen he's got nowhere else to play. So I'm thinking, I'm his only option. I don't want him to play back, so I've made the run forward. He's slid me in took a touch in, seen the keeper come out. There's been four chances in that position. They've gone across goal, keeper saved it all. So I thought, let me near post, but I thought, I need to make sure it goes in, so I had to roof it. I don't believe it, do you know what I mean? Because there's no fans, you don't really get the buzz. But once I saw it actually go in, so went to the corner, knee slide. I don't know what to do, so I just went safe, done knee slide. I'll give back to where I'm from, the community. No one really did anything giving back to that area, but at the same time, it was because no one really had the opportunity to. So, you know, obviously right now I've got the opportunity, I'm in the position where I can. In Congo, so I'm building a few uh, academies, pitches, just for like the locals or anyone can go and play um, schools, for kids that are not really in, in, to, in school, you know, just to put a smile on their faces, you know, because that could have been me, could have been anyone, you know, so just giving everyone a chance to enjoy life, really. People think I don't smile, people think I'm upset, moody, or, you know what I mean? Um, that's just how pictures, when pictures come up, that's what they capture. Everyone that's approached me, like strangers, fans, you know, when they speak to me, friendly conversation, you know, I'll give, I'll give my time for you. Just don't judge a book by its cover.